Hi everybody. In today's video, we are going to calculate some pK parameters after a loading dose of a drug. So in this scenario, a patient is given an IV loading dose of 400 milligrams of drug B at time zero. Based on the following drug concentrations, we're going to calculate T1 half or half-life, Ke or the elimination rate constant, C0, meaning the initial concentration of the drug that's accomplished, and volume of distribution. With the following information, the drug concentration 16 hours post that loading dose is 11.9 milligrams per liter, and the drug concentration 24 hours post that loading dose is 9.4 milligrams per liter. So let's get started here. With half-life, this is a very common calculation, and that calculation looks like this. 0 0.693 over the elimination rate constant. So I know what you're saying, we don't have the elimination rate constant. So let's go calculate that first, and then we'll finish this half-life. So the elimination rate constant also has a couple different calculation forms. One of the most common that we'll see, especially with concentrations of a drug, because it's the only way we can calculate it, is the following. And what this equation is telling us, it's the negative of the natural log of concentration 1 minus the natural log of concentration 2 over the corresponding time 1 at which concentration 1 was measured and time 2 which concentration 2 was measured. So let's plug this in and solve. So what we have is natural log of 11.9, which is our concentration at 16 hours. So 11.9 and 16 hours. Minus the natural log of 9.4, which is that second concentration we have in this problem, at 24 hours. So if you were to plug that in to your calculator, you get 0.0295 hours to the minus 1. Well, how do we get those units? Well, the top becomes unitless because we convert it by natural logs. And then the bottom has the hours in it. So hours to the negative 1 is also equal to 1 over hour. But commonly, we see it put as hours to the minus 1. So now that we have this answer, we can go back and calculate our half-life. And what we get is a half-life of about 23 and a half hours. And so where did the units come from here? If we put the units on our KE, that actually makes the hours go into the numerator. So that's how we get 23.5 hours. Now let's go ahead and calculate the initial concentration, or C0, that it's asking for. So before we do that, let's make sure we're understanding what we're doing. So let's say we have a drug and we're going to plot it on this concentration versus time graph. We're going to assume simple kinetics with this drug where we have a concentration that starts out higher after something like a loading dose. And then we don't give any more doses so it kind of naturally be, is removed from the body by various metabolism and excretion routes. So then let's say we have a concentration here that we know called X. How do we calculate the two different future concentrations or previous unknown concentrations in this scenario? So let's take a look at how we calculate a future concentration. And that's by this handy little formula where concentration of some unknown time in the future is equal to dose over volume or concentration, we can also, if we have just a previous concentration, we can plug that into it, such as C1 or C2. And then it's multiplied by this somewhat unpalatable part of the equation, exponential to the minus Ke, or elimination rate, times that time. And so what does the second part of the equation do? It accounts for the elimination of the drug or the downward part of this relationship that we're seeing between concentration 
and time. And so specifically Ke, we just calculated it, and T would be whatever the amount of time is from the known concentration to the desired future concentration we want to calculate. So with that in mind, how do we calculate a back concentration? How do we tell an equation to not eliminate but to add drug concentration back in? And the way we can do that is we actually switch this part, the elimination part of the equation, right here, to 1 over E minus Ke to the T. So that's how we would get a previous concentration as compared to a future concentration. So let's go ahead and do that because this point actually here right there is C naught. So let's calculate that. And so for our problem here, we're going to plug in C1 with T1 to calculate the initial concentration after the loading dose. And so when we do this math here, what we get is 19.1 milligrams per liter. So we can do two, a check here. Is this concentration higher than the C1 we put in there? Yep. So it looks like it worked. It actually added concentration or drug level back on to get us to C0. Now let's do a double check here of this future concentration by calculating C2 based on C1. And let's see if it really works. So let's bring this down here. So let's calculate C2. So what we have here is concentration 1 and multiplied by the exponential of the rate elimination rate constant and then the amount of time that has gone from concentration 1 to concentration 2 which is 8 hours. And lo and behold, if we calculate that, we get 9.4 milligrams per liter. So the calculation works and we would expect that because we based our elimination rate constant calculation on those two concentrations. So everything's intertwined here. So finally, let's calculate our volume of distribution. And that's done with this handy little calculation here. Now I will say there's other ways to calculate volume of distribution as well, which we'll probably go over in other videos. But based on the information we have in the video here, or in this problem here, we're actually going to calculate it with dose over C0, where the dose was 400 milligrams. In C0, we just calculated 19.1 milligrams per liter. And if we calculate that, we get 29 20.9 liters where our milligrams cancel out and the liters goes to the numerator so we get 20.9 liters. So in this calculation we went over some highly useful techniques on how to calculate the half-life which applies to all types of scenarios, the elimination rate constant which also can apply to almost any scenario, and then we learned about the differences between calculating pre-dose concentrations or sometimes called the highest of the dose concentration, or the C0, and then post-dose concentrations, or also just sometime in the future concentrations. And then finally, we looked at how to calculate volume of distribution. These equations are going to be highly useful in many different scenarios. They can even be used in extravascular or oral dosing scenarios as long as you calculate in the bioavailability. Thank you for your time.